At the same time, any pullback towards 1980, 2000 should be used to liquidate your long position in HDFC Limited. Chart is not that good. I think any pullback should be used to liquidate long. All right. Any pullback, in fact, should be a, a opportunity to liquidate long positions in these names. Ritesh Ashar from KIFS is also with us uh, this afternoon. Ritesh, what's your reading of the market situation right now? What's weighing on sentiment? Is it more global cues or is it something election related which we haven't quite factored in yet? Uh, to be very honest, Dipanshu, it is both the ways. The way the global queue has impacted uh, due to the Trump tweet uh, on this fri last Friday. And at the same time, the crude price is also a big concern. If you uh, look at it, the crude price is also highly volatile in the last couple of trading sessions. So I personally feel the overall global queues uh, at the same time in uh, May series, uh, overall election result is also going to be impacted uh, more. So I personally feel the sentimental right now is quite negative and the market has uh, opened the range between level 11,300 to 11,800. It is considered to be a very wild range, but this the, uh, in this wild range, it is a uh, definitely advisable investor uh, to stay away from the trading perspective. But from investment point of view, yes, definitely, it is a good chance to buy a stock and in gradual phases and create a long and the strong portfolio. Right. Uh, where would you find safety right now, Ritesh? I mean, how would you go about uh, advising your clients? How would you go about uh, managing some of your positions at the moment? Uh, see, right now the hedging strategy is uh, definitely advisable against the outstanding position in the cash segment. But uh, sector specific view is definitely a positive for us. If you look at it, uh, metal and uh, uh, metal, media, infra, oil and gas, we are quite negative for this matter. When it comes to positive, we are very much positive in terms of cement, in terms of bank, uh, in terms of uh, auto also for this matter at current uh, current price. If you look at overall long term story and the current book value of particular stocks, I think banking is going to be an uh, turnout story, especially in PSU Bank. We find SBI and Bank of Baroda at every dip, it is considered to be in buying opportunity. No doubt currently at a selling pressure, the stock is in the correction zone, but it is considered to be and buying opportunity, particularly in PSU Bank. In the private sector bank, SDFC Twins looks to be quite promising and the Access Bank followed by ICICI Bank. If you look at ICICI Bank in terms of result, in terms of uh, managing and the restructuring of the entire organization perspective, it is quite impressive. Long term point of view, ICICI Bank looks to be very promising. Seems like every time we take a break, we are at the lows of the day on the street. The Nifty is falling further right now. You are down about 140 odd points. 11,350 is the low of the day that the Nifty has hit. The Bank Nifty is struggling to hold to that 29,000 mark. PSU Banks coming under pressure led by an SPI. Pharma names. Media stocks are cracking in trade. It's a 5% cut coming in on the media index. We've spoken about Z and Dish, of course, Rajesh. Uh, I just wanted to ask you on a Sun TV as well because that's another media stock that's struggling in trade right now. Yeah, uh, I think uh, overall media package certainly looking weak. If you look at Sun TV on a short -term time frame, if you look at the daily chart, uh, earlier support was 570. Point is, below 570, trend is weak and probably you will see Sun TV hitting the recent law of 480 to 490. So, it will be a sell with a stop loss of 555. All right, uh, that's a Sun TV for you. Uh, it's 3.15, time to get some BTST ideas from our experts uh, as well. Uh, Ashish, uh, you've in fact chosen to go long on a couple of uh, mid-cap names uh, even as the market structure is looking weak right now. So I think uh, you are seeing uh, some buying interest in the small and mid-cap uh, basket and um, uh, that is and it is really getting unaffected by the mm -hmm. kind of turmoil which we are witnessing at an index level. You saw Hester Bioscience which posted results has seen a very strong uh, you know, uh, delivery-based buying interest coming in last couple of few trading sessions. A so few ideas which we have identified. First one is Inox Leisure. If you look at this stock, you know, we have seen a very strong volume in today's trading session and stock has been continuously consolidating uh, and may, taking support around 300 zone for last couple of few trading sessions. We need to also understand Inox Leisure has underperformed the PVR in last couple of few months and going forward, we believe that there can be a good catch-up rally which one can expect with the kind of uh, technical setup we are witnessing in Inox Leisure. So upside 335 could be a short term target. 300 should be kept as a trading stop loss for going long into um, Inox Leisure. Um, 
DCM Shriram is one stock in the agrochemical uh, theme which is looking very, very uh, promising. Uh, it's a very strong structure and I think the way, oh, you know, delivery volumes is, is picking up, one can expect a decent 7-8% kind of upside from current levels. 460 would be my trading stop loss, 520 could be a short term target one can expect in DCM Shriram. Alright, so two uh, long calls there in the mid-cap universe. Uh, Rajesh, you've opted to short another nifty name, yeah. what's your view? Uh, I think, uh, Deep, uh, uh, if you look at the uh, pain sector, Asian Pent is one counter which is looking extremely weak at current juncture. If you look at the option status, there is a heavy short build-up which we observed yesterday, in fact, uh, uh, day before yesterday as well. Uh, today, it is, uh, although it's a, it's, a, it's a sign of pause, uh, but if you look at the option statistics, again, open interest is up by uh, 11%. And uh, if you look at the price pattern, price pattern is a head and shoulder price formation, which is a bearish formation. So I'm ex expecting a pullback up to 1400, 1410. I would like to use that pullback to liquidate long rather to create fresh short. I would like to place my stop loss at 1420. I'm expecting a correction back to 1340, 1350 odd level. All right, uh, so that's a short on Asian paints, but a buy on DCM Shiram as well as Inox Leisure. We're talking about autos, uh, which are amongst the top sectoral losers in trade. We've spoken of uh, the slowdown coming in. We've spoken of weak sales at the wholesale level and at the retail level as well. Uh, that trend continues. It's not a good start to the financial year for the auto sector. FADA data shows that all categories of vehicle registrations have, in fact, shown a negative uh, trend uh, at the start of this financial year. Hiral Desai has uh, gone through those numbers and joins us with an analysis. Hiral, what are the numbers telling you? That's right. So overall, if you go to see, we already had the April sales data, which was indicating that, yes, there is a slowdown which has come in into the system. Now, uh, in terms of the registration numbers that have come in from FADA, it's clearly giving you an indication that the financial year has begun pretty much on a negative note. In fact, all regist you know, categories of uh, vehicles have registered a degrowth in the month of April. And the overall consumer sentiment itself is remaining weak. That's the indication that we're picking up from FADA itself. However, with this weak sentiment, the inventory levels continue to remain high. The anticipation earlier was that the kind of inventory clearance that we could see in the month of March, that would continue in the month of April as well, but that has not happened. Because if you see the average inventory levels, it does range between 40 to 50 days uh, for PVs, two-wheelers, as well as CVs. So the inventory levels are still pretty much high in the month of April also, and that is a concerning area. Uh, apart from that, if you go to see... Uh, what FADA has said is that they would strongly advocate for 21 days of inventory vis-a-vis. -vis. Now, if you go to say it's ranging between 40 to 50 days, so it's almost double than what should be the exact level. Uh, moving from there on, another crisis what FADA is indicating is the liquidity at the dealer level and the access to working capital because that has remained pretty much negative. So that's another concerning area what they've been staring at. Uh, overall, if you go to see the commercial vehicle as well as the three-wheelers, uh, these were the ones uh, you know, segments which actually witnessed the highest growth in financial year FY19 and these two are the segments which have seen the highest fall in the month of April itself. If you see in terms of the two-wheelers and passenger vehicles, they've seen a degrowth of around 9% and 2% respectively. Uh, there has been degrowth in all the categories uh, because April again of 2018 also had a high base and that needs to be taken into consideration. However, the only positive aspect that we are picking up on a month-on-month -month basis right now is is the growth that has been shown by the CV segment. On a month-on-month -month basis, a 2% growth is what we've seen by the CV segment. However, FADA is saying that the situation at the retail level could continue to remain negative at least for the next 8 to 12 months. So again, the next one quarter, at least three to, you know, uh, one quarter is something that we need to watch out for. Uh, the only reason why we could see a turnaround uh, on the positive side for the auto sector could happen is, uh, again, dependent on the stable government. An average to above average monsoon, if, if that's okay, then you could see a turnaround. And lastly, if the liquidity that is squeezed right now, that ease, uh, eases up, then we could see. But these are macro factors that need to start playing, which could take a longer term. Uh, everyone is indicating that the liquidity squeeze could continue for the next three to four quarters. And this, in turn, is actually giving you a picture that, yes, there is a slow slowdown, uh, which is happening in the consumption space, not only from the FMCG spy, but also uh, the numbers that have come in from FADA in terms of registration is indicating a major slowdown. Absolutely. Um 
not a good picture for autos. In fact, bad news keeps coming in. Uh, Ritesh, uh, what's your approach to autos right now? I mean, none of these names have managed to hold on. Maruti, from that bounce back of 75, has gone back to 65. Bajaj Auto under pressure. Hero Motor under pressure. M&M hasn't gone anywhere. Tata Motors, that recovery is not playing out. Ashok Leyland is coming under pressure. What's happening in autos right now? Is there more pain ahead according to you? See, looking at the overall numbers that have been reported, I think uh, the pain is still more to uh, watch out for. But when we look at for the long-term pro uh, perspective of 6 months to 12 months of horizon, I think it is considered to be a good buying opportunity. Uh, I think uh, Maruti, Tata Motors and the Ashok Lele, particularly we'll, let us talk about Ashok Lele first. Ashok Lele at the current market price, I think it's considered to be a fair value in terms of buying. I think 25 to 30% of your investment amount can be uh, buying in this particular stock. If you look at overall the structure of an organization, management is diversifying from the auto segment to the defense sector also, wherein management are expecting in next three years of uh, downline, they are expecting 10,000 crores of uh, revenue from the defense sector. So I think Ashok Leland looks to be quite promising uh, over here. In terms of Tata Motor, definitely at current market prices does not look to be very promising and even price to book value is not suggesting. I think 160 and 165, it looks to be good in terms of Tata Motors. Maruti, definitely yes, 600, uh, 6,000 or 6,200, it is considered to be a good buying opportunity. If you look at overall uh, participation in terms of Maruti or rather market share, it is almost by 50 to 60%. If you look at 100 cars as sold out, uh, out of it, 70 or 60 odd numbers are from the Maruti. So right now, it is more painful uh, territory for the auto segment. But at the same time, long term pro uh, perspective, it is definitely considered to be a buying opportunity. At the same time, auto ancillary, my recommendation will be on the uh, Madarsan Sumi, which is right now running at roughly around 130 to 135. It is having a presence all over the country by almost 36 centers. And year on year basis, it is almost growing by 12% and the profit margin is increased by 18 to 19%. Overall structure of our organization is quite uh, positive. So apart from the auto, we can focus into the auto ancillary, especially into the uh, Madarsan Sumi. All right. Uh Possibly some auto ancillary names may look good, although for the moment, of course, you're not seeing any positive traction there. But a couple of tire stocks, uh, Ashish, are holding out in trade. Uh, something like a C8, uh, there's a heavy open interest addition uh, on that counter as well. It's not looking too bad right now, 2% up. MRF up, of but of course, uh, lower volumes on that counter, but 2.5% up in trade. And just uh, speaking of other mid-cap uh, universe not related to auto, something like Kajaria is also doing well in trade right now. Any calls on these mid-caps? See, I think after, uh, you know, uh, seeing sharp cuts in last one week or two week time frame, most of these names are trying to see some kind of short covering. Today, you can, could witness the same trend in CG power for that matter. Kajaria is seeing a good uptick after seeing a sharp cut and a C8, which has fallen from uh, almost 1180, 1190 zone to uh, to around 1000 odd levels. Now we are seeing some buying interest. But if you look at C8 particularly, there we are witnessing some uh, good amount of, you know, OI addition. So I think now some base has been created around 1000. 1048-1047 zone. Keeping that in mind, I think up move towards 1080-1085 could be seen in C8, but 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 that should be used as in a very short term uh, trading opportunity rather than any any aggressive call into it. All right. Uh, so C8 uh, possibly a short term trade uh, won't look too bad. Uh, just one more auto name, uh, Escorts. Uh, that's also down about three three and a half percent right now. Uh, Rajesh, any view on that chart? Uh, Deep, I think a trend is still weak, but I think this is not the time to uh, create fresh short. As we have seen a beating from 820 up to now, now if I'm not wrong, 630. So 820 to 630, I think we have seen a decent sort of correction. So probably you will see a fall up to 600, 600, 610 from current level. But I think I won't be a seller in uh, escort at this juncture. The reason is, again, there is one more reason. This, uh, it is holding decently about its important short-term trend line support, which uh, happens to be somewhere near 620, 25 odd level. So you can say 620, 630 could be the level where one can start thinking to cover short at least once. Maybe pullback could be uh, could be utilized uh, to initiate fresh short, but not at this juncture. All right, uh, not at this juncture, but uh, escorts uh, possibly on uh, further weakness is something that you could look at. Sipla uh, is managing to hold out and trade right now. UPL that Ashish mentioned and uh, is going to have its uh, uh, board meeting later to possibly consider a bonus issue is holding out. Titan ahead of its numbers is also just about positive. But uh, Ritesh, any expectations in and around Titan? We had that sell-off at the start of the week. Uh, since then, it's been consolidating numbers coming out after market hours today. Anything in particular you'd watch out for on this stock? 
I personally feel in terms of uh, Titan, uh, in terms of sales number are not meeting the market expectation, but in terms of profit margin, if you look at, I'm expecting profit margin is way beyond the, uh, based on the expectation, but net in net, overall uh, result, it is uh, far better than the expectation. So it looks to be quite a promising result this time. So counter looks to be very positive for me for the long term perspective. All right, positive on Titan from long term view. Uh, Ritesh, you spoke of a couple of uh, banks that could possibly be good hiding places. Uh, what's your view on a Yes Bank? I mean, uh, you know, it's been a very rough ride for Yes Bank this year. Management change, big fall, smart recovery, another big fall coming in. At 150, 160, is it at fair value or could there be some more pain on cards here? I think 125, 130 considered to be a uh, fair value. Below uh, 120, it is considered to be a very attractive buying. I will tell you the logic behind it. If you look at the overall uh, asset under management, it is coming to around 25,000 crore, in which the recently quarter four provision have been uh, come across in such a way, wherein the asset under management will be decreased by almost 5,000 to 6,000 crores. If if asset under management will be decreased by uh, five to 6,000 crore, which is equal to 19,000 and 20,000 crores overall, uh, which means the price to book value, uh, which comes to around 109 and 110 odd numbers. So I considering that current market price is definitely avoidable counter, but uh, 125, 126, it is considered to be a fair value. Below 120, it is, looks to be very attractive. Long term prospective, it is going to be very positive counter, but short term sentiment is quite negative. 